Example 1. Find the Cartesian equation for the graph represented by each of the following vectors. A. R of t equals 2 minus ti plus 3 plus t squared j. So R of t is a position vector, so you can always write that as x of i plus y of j. And that's going to be equal to 2 minus ti plus 3 plus t squared j. So equate the coefficients. So we'll equate the coefficients for i. So x will be equal to 2 minus t. Um, if we um, transpose that um, to get t by itself, t will be equal to 2 minus x. Still equating the coefficients, do it for the y now. So y will be equal to 3 plus t squared. Um, you're going to substitute in for t now. So y is equal to 3 plus, and we already know that t from earlier is 2 minus x. Expand out the bracket. And we'll have 3 plus 2 squared is 4. Multiply the two terms together and double. So minus 4x squared the last one, plus x squared. Neaten it up a little bit to get it into a nice little form. So y equals x squared minus 4x plus 7. And that's a Cartesian equation. Now note you can also get the, um, the domain and range from the x and the y. Oh, don't know what happened there. All right, so there's x. There's y. So for our domain, we are told in the question t is an element of r's. So if x is equal to 2 minus t, then x is an element of r. And if we do the range, look at the y values. So we know that t is um, an element of the r's, but anything squared is going to be zero or greater than zero. So looking at that, y is going to be three plus something greater than or equal to zero. So the range will be y uh, is an element of three to infinity. Okay. And if you graph this um, Cartesian equation, x squared minus four x plus seven, uh, you'll find that the um, turning point is going to be, um, it'll, it'll have a y value of 3. But you don't need to actually, you know, graph the Cartesian equation. You can get the domain and range um, from the initial parametric equations that you've set up. All right, that was A. So let's do B now. One with a little trig function. So again, write your position vector as xi plus yj. And don't forget they're vectors, so they need a little tilde under them. That's going to be equal to 1 minus cos t i. Uh, bracket there somewhere, too many brackets. Plus sine t j. Equate the coefficients. For x, you get x is equal to 1 minus cos t. And for y, you get y is equal to sine t. So remember, we with the trig ones, get rid of to solve your parametric equations, we want a sine squared and a cos squared, so we can add them and use the trig identity that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So getting the cos squared by itself, looks like I've moved my screen, there we go, getting the cos t by itself, cos t equals 1 minus x, um, sine t equals y. So squaring them both and adding, we'll have cos squared t plus sine squared t will be equal to 1 minus x squared plus y squared. 
So that's just going to be 1 is equal to 1 minus x squared plus y squared. So that's a circle. Centre 1, 0. And radius of 1. Now, uh, if you sketched that out, draw out my circle. What was it? Centre, 1, 0. So 1's about there. Change colour there. And let me sketch that round there. Mr. Wobbly looks like a bit like Mr. Potato Head. That is your circle. Uh, there's your X coordinate, there's your Y coordinate. And again, check out the domain. So we know from the question that um, T was an element of the reals. So we know for cos T, just think about a cos graph or a negative cos graph, that will go between um, 1 and negative 1. So we can see that the x value will be, um, the domain will go up to uh, 2 and down to 0. So the domain will be, lower 1 first of course, 0 to 2. And that, if you look at the graph, that matches what you've got on the graph from 0 to 2. And your range, because it's what t is that then determines what or x and y are. So always do your domains you know, using your t value. Again, sine t, well, um, sine has an amplitude of 1, so it's got to go between minus 1 and 1. So your range is minus 1 to 1. And again, look at the graph. And you can see that that matches that range. Very nice.